Greetings, friends, and welcome to another adventure into the world of Sawin's creativeness. We're going into the tome, and this week we are going into my monster build. And thank you to my daughter for my awesome bookmark. So, the creature you're seeing here, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's a little bit of nightmare fuel. Uh, things that I hate. Wood ticks. I, I want the legs to have a feeling of that type of thing. Regardless, I'm going to get onto the computer. I'm going to start drawing this thing out. We're going to get right into building this. Aha! Well, I've drawn it and it's ready to go. And this monster is large. As you can see, all of the claws are built. What you see here are registration marks for when you actually print this thing out. The file down below will be all set up lovely like so you can actually print this out on a regular printer using 8.5 by 11. So, what we're going to do is we're immediately going to get into doing just this upper carapace first and then we'll take everything else after that. So as I mentioned, there's a file down below that what you'll do is you'll print out the pages, cutting along the bullet points on two of the sheets, you'll tape this together and then cut the whole thing out. Now, these are marks, God, that's a huge template, regardless. These marks here are just for design after the fact. Now, these ones are more important. These are contour marks, and this is what we're going to use to guide along to cut the styrofoam. Since this thing is symmetrical, what you'll do is you'll put this thing onto a piece of styrofoam and flip it to get the template down. The These marks are just for contouring it with a hot knife after. I wanted it to be the same, so I needed something to address that. So I'm going to go get this thing onto a piece of styrofoam, and we're going to start getting this thing cut out. And... The rest of the stuff you can see here is all the legs, all of the spines. This thing's going to be fun. Back in a few. We now have this thing all cut out. I used a bandsaw with a 14 inch throat to do it. You can use a hot wire knife or everything. You know what your tools you have. You know what you need to do to get to this point. Or this might be beyond your capability. Regardless, there is ways of doing this. You can do two inches at a time, then laminate them together. It's up to you. Regardless how I did it was with my bandsaw now you can see now we got all our contour lines But we need a side contour line. Hopefully I can get this here There we go. So You'll see that I have a Dotted line here What this is is this is the line that's going to match up with this contour up here So when I pull the hot knife through I've got a guide that I'm kind of aiming for on both directions because then you just end up with it being pretty even. Now, how I did this was with this little doomahickey. And uh, dad, I bet you never thought I was gonna use this for this for purpose. It works really well. I just set the depth and then what I do is I just go along and poke dots. It worked fantastic. It's usually, it's a scribe for doing wood, but it's worked perfect for the foam. Now the bottom, we're gonna be chamfering a little bit, but that one's not as important because depth isn't as big. So I just went around the whole thing and did this. Now, on the bottom, you will, on that file, find the carapace bottom. Now we're gonna be cutting this again out of styrofoam, like the four inch, but we need to make sure that it's not just like flat on flat. It just never looks good as you would have wanted. I wanna do a little bit of a chamfer here. So the carapace has like a, a pattern coming up. Then I can do some fun under here. I can do some striping, whatever, to make it look like this actually connects with the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I drew this onto here. Now the only difference, which I want to make sure I point out, is you see here that this is also going to be cut off. I deliberately did it where this is going to be routed down at the same level as everything else. Because this body, when it goes through, if I do it right here, you'll see... There's just a tiny bit here. I'm just gonna get rid of it so it doesn't have a chance of breaking off. Now, I'm gonna go route this down probably half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. When you do your routing, start in the center and work out to get this all cleared out. This is a huge area and I'm gonna be making a mess of myself and my garage doing it, but it's all in the name of creation. Okay, I have to go clean it up after. Regardless, I'm gonna go get this cut out and I'm gonna start doing the chamfering with a hot knife. Now the hot knife I'm gonna be using to do this big stuff is this monster. This is a, I picked this up at Princess Auto in Canada, but I think it's Harbor Freight has a similar hot knife. This thing has got a very wide cut, 
but it's perfect because this blade here is rigid. It'll allow me to do really nice deep cuts without worrying about it. Now, on Amazon, I picked up this little guy as well. This is a very thin knife. This is good for doing later detail, but it's it has some flex to it. You can see that it, it bends. Might not be the best for doing this. We're going to see. I'm going to have to find out. Anyways, when you see this again, this is going to be all routed out and ready to go. And I'm going to be have done the top chamfer and I'll discuss any issues I run into with it at that point. I'll see in a few. Okay, we have now got quite a few of the contours done. You can see the, how the hot knife goes through the styrofoam. It leaves some burnt marks. Well, the good news is I'm making this into bone. So these look just amazing on it. So I'm not going to mess with it. You can see the two levels of contour. The first contour was here. Then the second contour was a lot more shallow. And then once I was done, I took a palm sander. You can just use sanding paper. And I brought this down. I have a bit more to do on this, but it's getting a lot closer. Now, our flip side. So you can see that I routed out all the interior here. And then what happens is I was left with this as being full height. Now, I first of all drew a line one inch in on this side. Then I used the hot knife and I cut it down to give me this contour right here. So you can see it goes up. Then I drew another line just about half an inch wide all the way around. And then using the uh, my, my spacer again, I came up about an inch and a quarter here. You might change it on your own, but I went about an inch and a quarter, put a line, just so I had something to gauge by, and then I used the hot knife again, and I chamfered this side down. Now, the final thing I did just for fun was I took the hot knife and I did a whole bunch of lines here, because I kind of wanted that look in the inside. Next step here is I'm going to start going through doing a whole bunch of uh, bone texture on it. I've got these holes here that we're going to put in. So what I'm going to do is just going to line this up here, pin it on, and then have these cut out so I know where these dots go. And that way it lines it up on both sides. And I'm going to use a Dremel to cut those out. Now, after this, we're going to go through and we're going to start working on the lower carapace. But as you can see, this is already starting to have a very cool profile to it of a heavily armored bone dome on this creature. Anyways, I'll be back to discuss the... Actually, I'll be back once I put these holes in so you can see how it turned out and the other little bit of weathering that I did. I'll be back. I have returned from doing a whole bunch of texturing on this, and I did one extra change. Template down below, you'll find this shape here. I cut this down about an extra half an inch, and then using my soldering, it's not even a soldering knife, this is actually a wood burning uh, iron, with a very tight point on it, I did a whole bunch of detail holes. As you can see, I used it here as well to cut out all these shapes. And I just went through and I gave it almost a, a bone-like texture. Now, what we're going to work on next, I'm going to move this out of the way, is this, which is going to be the lower body. Now, on that template, you'll find two items. You'll find this, and you'll find a second one with just the contour on it. I did that because you want to be able to reference this after and we don't want to cut this one up. So what you do is you put it on, you place it, you put your lines on, and then what I did is I went down an inch and a quarter to here. So when I do my angle, it's going to be strong, but not so big that when you put your legs on that you're going to run out of space for it to hinge because remember a little bit of this above. You've got a little bit of room, but this is going to be more complicated, this bottom part, because of the legs and because of this texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go cut this out now, and then I'm going to figure out where the legs are going to go, and I'll be back to talk about how to do those designs. These designs are not, like, precise. You can modify these. This is just a guideline. Most of my stuff I'm doing is just guidelines. Anyways, I'll be back once I get this all cut down and we'll talk about the mouth area as well. And we'll just take it from there. See in a few. You can see now that I've got all of the chamfering done on this. I've got the mouth area starting to be brought down into shape. And you'll see that I got all the leg sockets cut out. Now, if you look at this absolutely crazy, well, this is going to be very hard doing this one-handed. 
you can see this crazy thing here. This is our template that we used. And what I did is I drew, cut everything out. You're not going to get this perfect. I'm telling you that right now. What you want to do is you want to get it close where you line up the back, line up the front, and then what you do is you use this to draw your lines and to get all your template done right. You can see that my center, there we go, my center is there. It ended up being a little bit off, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Just do what you can to make this thing look good. Then what you do is once you trace the first side, flip to the other side, and trace again. These lines do not have to be perfect again, just have to be close. The only thing that I did is cut out these big slots here, as per the template, which I can only, oh, it's on the other template actually. You'll see that that's exactly what you cut out for the legs, and then we're gonna continue on. I'm now gonna use uh, my hot knife here, a combination between this and my other one, to just bring these down about a quarter to three eighths of an inch, just to make it look good. I have to, might have to change, I'll see how things go. I'm not. 100%. The only thing I have to do that you have to do extra here is you have to freeform your ends of these just a little bit. And then these V's here are going to be done with the hot knife. I'm going to be doing a big cut in here just to give a bit more dimension here. Anyways, I'll see you in a few. See, all of the detailing is done. I've gone through using my my hot knife uh, to do all these deeper details. And all it does is it makes sure that you have a bit of deep contour when you look at the side of this thing and then using my wood burning uh, soldering iron I went through and I did a whole bunch of holes and I did a little bit of a edging on here just to make it look so it's not as flat now on the sides you can see I once again used the the wood burning uh, knife to do up here and I used the cutout here and just did a few more dots and a bit more work here you know you go through and you get this thing to the point that you like the way it looks and the final part is on the top here I just cut out a few little elements to give this a bit of texture because this sticks out the back of the carapace so you'll see this part so I just wanted to make it look a little bit more interesting than just that is top nothing needs to be done because of course the carapace goes on top of this now you're gonna hate me we need to start cutting out legs and oh are you going to cut out legs the first part of the main body is going to use eight of these. Now, on the template, this has a claw on it. You'll be wanting to use that one to trace out six, six legs with claws. And then what you'll do is you'll cut the claw off and then you'll do two more of this one. And what it'll do, it'll make room so we can use the large scythe claw. And what's gonna happen here is getting two inch styrofoam you're going to trace the shape onto here and cut them out once you've got that done you want to grab your hot knife like this and what I do is I cut through here to give the a depth cut actually no I got a better idea here I'll describe what I did here so this is what it's gonna look like when it's all cut out now I use the hot knife to do these large grooves here to get it so you know there's a joint there then using the soldering knife or the soldering iron I'm just gonna call a soldering iron because wood burning iron sounds so weird so they use the soldering iron to cut all of these and what I do is I use it to poke up inside to give it a more definition then what I'm gonna do is you want to cut out a U on the back of each of the joints it just makes it look cooler and makes it more believable that that is a flex joint then using the soldering knife I just go through and I just textured that a little bit just gave it some lines so it doesn't look flat then using the hot knife I took these large swipes off of all four corners and what it does you can see it gives it a very much a, almost like a carapace look to it do it four times it doesn't have to be perfect and that's what's really nice about this is the more random it is the more believable it becomes so what you'll do is you'll go through you'll create two of these you'll create um what was it six of the other legs and then we'll go back and we'll put them on and that's where we're going to end for this video before we head on to part two regardless you can see that this is a pretty cool looking carapace then what we'll do is we're going to be gluing once we get to that point the large claw onto the top of each one of these but i'll be back to talk about the final stage we're doing for this video and then we'll continue on See you in a moment. 
All right, as you can see now, all eight legs on the main body are carved. We're gonna be carving more later. Just as a quick note, when you do all this styrofoam work, please wear a proper mask. This stuff is not good to breathe, and the amount that you're gonna be doing, it's going to add up very quickly. These legs, I sat outside for about two hours carving all these legs, and you can see on the claws here, all I did is using the wood burning uh, knife, I went really deep and I actually caught the, the top of the wood burning knife to give these bigger grooves. And I wanted to mention that the flats where you may have raw styrofoam, if you use the barrel of the actual wood burning knife, it really seals it easily. So now once you've got all of your legs carved, we're not attaching them to the body yet. This is where we're ending it off uh, today. We're gonna to be back for more. I just don't want this to be too lengthy and you know, you can see, all of our legs are done. I don't want this to be too lengthy and to lose 8 million people while watching it because this is a big build and I want it to be done in digestible parts. Anyways, if you like this, please hit the like, subscribe, that thing too. And uh, if you want to sign up for my Patreon, there's also a link in the description. Regardless, thanks everyone who has tuned in and watched and those who support my work. And at the end of the video, you'll see my Patreon list for those people who have signed up. Have a good one all.